What's up, people? Back again with my weekly check-in. Everything I read, everything I'm gonna read, some books I bought, what I think about what's going on in the world, that dude that burnt himself alive, oh my fucking God. So, all that shit. Just what, what's I, what have I been doing this week? And yeah, I already threw myself off with that, just thinking about that, sorry. But yeah, just everything, the whole world. Uh, I read Tad Williams, uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Th Thorn. And in that book, they have uh, fire dancers and they're people, it's the end of the world in that book. And people start setting themselves on fire. And then if you remember, there was that uh, climate scientist who set himself on fire in front of the Supreme Court building a couple years back. People are crazy. I, I don't mean to call them crazy. And I'm sorry to start off this way. Well, no, you know, you should, uh, I've been watching a lot of videos. I always watch a lot of videos, but they always save that news for the last. I don't want to get you down, but no, you should, you should start with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, I think his name was Aaron. I had it written down, I think. It was uh, Aaron, Aaron, I'm so sorry. I can't remember it, but yeah, RIP. And just the way the military is not looking at it, and it's crazy. But yeah, in that book, Memory Star of Throne, you used to read it. I don't, I don't give my books, the descriptions I always talk about my books, don't give it credit. That's a massive fantasy with tons of world building and everything. It's not just about people setting themselves on fire, but Memory Star of Thorn, read that. Um, yeah, I'll get to my news later. I'll go on my big rant, but... Yeah, if you see what's going on in the world, I'm worried about it. You're worried about it. Everyone should be worried about it. Fuck. But we're going to get onto the books. If you're still here, I just lost half of you. I know. Never. <laughs> I start. Uh, I'll start with the King in Yellow. Some creepy R. W. Chambers, I believe his name is. I got the graphic novel in the Low Free Library. Somebody, uh, not all the time, they leave graphic novels in here. And it's very uh, trippy. It's a whole novel. I want to show you some cool artwork. But it's basically about in an alternate history where, well, I'll just show you one. An alternate history, probably like 1920. And. People find this book and it makes them go mad everywhere this book go. The book, the book is called The King in Yellow. And everywhere this book goes, people go mad. And some old 1920s uh, alternate history because the, uh, it, the, it starts off and it starts labeling all these advanced stuff that we've done in the 1920s that we haven't done yet. And just, uh, oh man, I got already, anyways, I just bought this book. I already got a pen mark on it because I'm carrying around my pens. But I'll also do uh, this book. Okay, in December for Christmas, one of my, uh, my book buddies at my book clubs, they gave me a gift card and I have to use it. And so I bought some books and I got some uh, anthologies, some North, Nordic Visions, the best of Nordic speculative fiction, SF. I'm gonna start calling it SF, I'm gonna uh, later. I'll tell you why. And then Shadow of Carcosia. And that goes back to the King in Yellow, where I guess the whole the whole set, uh, uh, Tales of Cosmic Horror by Lovecraft, Chambers, Poe, other masters, Mitchin. I don't know who that is. But the the way HP Lovecraft wrote his stories from I, I'm not sure. Other other people did this. But you, it's like open world. You can make up your own stories about uh, Cthulhu or the, the Yellow King or there, there's a whole pantheon of gods and monsters and you could just add your own stuff to it. And I guess the Carcosia is something like an island or I'm not sure or maybe a state of being or however it is. And then the Nordic f fiction, Nordic visions, that just looks good. Some short fiction from Nordic. I was thinking, uh, do they all have to be white? And I, I'm not gonna look them all up, but uh, you think Nordic, and you already, oh, because uh, the only reason I thought about that is because it's made by the same people who made New Sons. And I was thinking that's all uh, people of color, and then they put Nordic. And I'm thinking, well, is that their all white version? But that's just my conspiracy brain. 
Anyways, get back. Uh, talking about short stories, the reason why I started want I want to read more short stories. I haven't hardly read any short stories this uh, this year. And uh, we went with Ian M. Banks, another culture series, a collection of uh, eight short stories, which are all very, very good. Ian M. Banks, which which is trippy about this. I think it is best read. Uh, you know, don't space them out too much apart. Read them together because some of the some of the stories you you're thinking like this has nothing to do with the culture and why is it even here but i think it's part of a theme leading up to something and it's so, I, uh, it's the fourth book in the series so i can't give you too much of a spoilers but it it is sci-fi like it is our universe and whenever you go into a sci-fi universe you have to know where is earth in all this and that's where we find out our position in the culture. Well, the culture expanded thousands and thousands of years. It's a, it's a millenniums, you know? Yeah, so <clears throat> where were we? And we found that out. It was very good, but it also, I was thinking, I haven't read any, any short stories and I haven't been reading any other sci-fi other than Eamon Banks. And that'll go into a little bit of my TBR, I guess, because in Ian M. Banks, he talks about Salman Rushdie's The Satanic Verses. So, and he also brings up The Man Who Fell to Earth. He brings this up at, in a David Bowie line. And David Bowie, I, I'm thinking, was a big sci-fi guy. Because I've heard his name and him talking about sci-fi or his name brought up when talking about English sci-fi writers and stuff. But it also has to do with that religion. He starts talking about real world uh, stuff. Because, yeah, not to give too much away, but in some of his short stories, why are already talking about like, when does this short story end? Uh, one of the short stories he's talking about, he, uh, a guy's on an airplane and he's talking about, you know, he brings up Solomon Rushdie, if I'm saying that right, which I'm not, I know. But more books that I just want to read. Uh, the culture series, it was getting kind of a lot of questions asked. It, uh, e. Man Banks is very good, uh, very well written, very mind blowing, Ma makes you makes you think about your place in the world and how our societies run, which is what good sci fi should do. Uh, I guess I'll do my rest of my uh, no, I'll save that for later. All right. And then I read if on a winter's night, a traveler's. This is a fucking crazy book, too. I'm sorry for cursing so much, but I don't know how... It's such a lazy cover, I think. I want a better cover for this. Because it's such a, a book lover's... It, it's, uh, it's, it's for book lovers. Because it's somebody talking to you. And that's the best... Those are my favorite books when somebody's talking to you. Like, hey, you picked this book up. I'm proud of you. <laughs> like, and you're reading it. Like, yeah, somebody's talking to me. I picked up somebody's secret message. And uh, this got recommended to me i've heard about it but uh it got on my radar again because somebody uh, left a comment and there's some stuff about here about how we share stories and everything and it just made me think about other people who read books and uh look i put a little message in here another theme of this book is like how can you really tell who's who's writing a book and it made me think about i also have okay well i'll get to that it also made me think about uh, Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. And if you don't know about that, Robert Jordan died writing his 15 book series, The Will of Time. He died during uh, book 12, I think, something like that. But so they had to finish it and they brought Brandon Sanderson, Brandon Sanderson in to finish it. And I swear, if nobody told me, I wouldn't be able to, maybe that makes me a, 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 not a good Robert Jordan fan. Or maybe that makes me an excellent Brandon Sanderson fan. He, uh, but I couldn't tell the difference. And then you think about some of the fan fiction. and Because, yeah, that's a big theme in this. Who's writing the book and how is it being told? And just a book for book lovers. I suggest you don't start with this one. You have to have a couple books under your belt. And uh, I'm also figuring it out with people's comments and... And going to my book clubs, I'll talk about my book clubs. I'll take a little break right now. I'll talk about, I went to my book club uh, about the Alice uh, network, about the network of female spies. And there were some people there that this was their first ever book club. And uh, 
it's nice to be, and people's comments are telling me that, oh no, we're learning a lot from you. I've never heard about this book and the way you tell about it. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm, I wanna do a better job is what I'm getting at. And thank you for everybody who's liking and subscribing and leaving comments and people who are on Goodreads who are see seeking me out. I'll go to another TBR because on Goodreads, I was just going through Goodreads and somebody put this on their uh, I want to read list and I saw it and I looked it up and I'm like, oh, it's only like three, four dollars on eBay. I'll pick it up, but it looks like one of those, uh, it's called, oh, well, Death in Her Hands. But it looks, uh, I like these kinds of stories where it, it looks like just a regular person and they're kind of going insane in life. But uh, yeah, I want to do better and take more notes, try to sound more competent. And I think I am. I just have to, but sometimes I say some stupid shit <laughs> and I think back on it. I'm like, that didn't make any sense that I said that. And I know you guys are giving me a, thank you for everybody who's giving me a break. Because I know you could you could leave comment after comment of all my errors and all the, my mispronunciations and all that stuff. So please thank you for not doing that. And yeah, just thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting. I appreciate it. Uh, we we'll go back to what I other read. What I other read? Okay, I also read the Never Ending Story. My new high standard of what fantasy should be. Look at that cover. So fucking beautiful. How do I center it? Yeah, never ending story. Falcor. <laughs> uh, what is it? Atreyu. <laughs> oh man. If you know, you know. Uh, if, if you make, if you want to do any fantasy, if you want to start fantasy, this is going to be the book I recommend to you to start fantasy. If you're a newcomer and you want to start fantasy and know what, it, maybe it's too high of a standard because this was amazing. Just the meta, meta, uh, meta books that just like, yeah, break the fourth wall. And yeah, this is real life. And then let's go to the fantasy and the fantasy aspect is just, and it's also uh, about growing up, you know, a little boy growing up. And it's just, it's amazing. If you've never seen the movie uh, or, the, or heard about it, uh, Never Ending Story was a old eighties movie. The first time, it, this book was made in 1976, I think. And the movie came out in 1980 something. But uh, the movie doesn't do it good. The movie doesn't do it justice, especially the ending. And then the movie is only like the first 25, 45% of this, the first 30 something percent of this, which is amazing because you get the rest. Yeah. If you ever saw the movie and you want the rest of the story or you just want to start fantasy, read uh, Michael Ends, The Never Ending Story. Oh my God. It was amazing. Uh, and then these two books I wanted to say since I've been writing my fan fiction about stuff, this gives you so much material to go off of because they, uh, they start stories and they say, yeah, but we'll save that for another time. And so they give you a lot of beginning of stories for you to work with. Like, oh yeah, wouldn't that be cool if somebody wrote a story about that? Like a never ending story. <laughs> oh, it blows my mind. Some of these writers, how, how well, and oh my God, they just blow my mind, man. Five star. My favorite book of, is probably going to be my favorite book of the year uh, right now. I'm not sure. If you haven't noticed, I try to redecorate my... I'm trying to put more of my favorite books from last year up. up. And then when you're doing that, it <laughs> you, you start having fun. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And you're flipping through them and you're reading my... I leave a lot of little post-it notes. And I'm, you know, yeah. And even the comic books I read, now that I read them, I can just flip through them. And yeah, it's not necessarily reread, but revisiting we're gonna keep going. Raiden Sweetgrass. I'm kind of, it's kind of losing me. It is that, um, I, it's all well intentioned. I know she is. I know she is. And it's, it's my own mind. I'm a uh, 200 and some pages in now. I'm all, it's separated into uh, books and I'm on book three now or four. I'm not sure which one, but, uh, she's talking about the stages and I just passed the the she's talking about braiding sweetgrass and picking it and the chapters are labeled in like the production factory process and i just got to like the meat and potatoes of the product production line and she's talking about going to the grocery store and stuff like this is the last part that i just read that she's talking about going to the grocery store and it just seems like she was putting a lot of weight it was made in 2012 2013 Hype Obama, where 
it was that, oh yeah, you know, we can fix the world still. We're recycle, recycle. And when, you know, now we know 10 years later, recycling is bullshit. Uh, organic, all those labels, they don't mean shit. We all know that. And she means well for a 2012 book. But I, I wouldn't say it's outdated, but I'm just, maybe I'm jaded. I am one of those, uh, the end, end of the world. The end of the world as we know it. In the next 20 years, be ready. I know people don't like it when, uh, and uh, people say, oh, everybody's always stopped. And I've seen videos, yeah, people in the 60s and people in the 20s, I've seen, you know, because uh, they show it on YouTube. People talk about this and they're like, yeah, people always thought about this and they have old videotapes and old newspapers. Yeah, it's the end of the world. But man, it's looking bad. <laughs> I know maybe I'm a doomer, but it is looking bad. And I hate to bring everybody down like that, but let's be realistic. All right, Braiding Sweetgrass is kind of losing me. My book club's on Wednesday about that. So, but there is, it's broken up into essays. So I'm thinking that I write at least 20 essays now. <laughs> you know, I got that general idea, but I want to read the ending. I, I, I want to finish. I always like to finish the book because maybe it might be, she might question some of that. She does question her place in capitalism and what she's doing and how the right way to hunt, which I was thinking, like, just don't hunt, you know, I, you know, it's so complicated, but why don't you, you know, there's plenty of the other people to hunt or the, uh, I don't know, hunting. I heard a good hunter. He was, uh, he does YouTube videos. I can't man eater or not man eater, meat eater. And, uh, he, he said something very cool that people get upset about fur, but leather is just the skin without the fur on it. Duh. Yeah, it's just one of those things. All right, we're going on to... Uh, I read Wonder Woman. Oh, I should just show you that. I read Wonder Woman. Jeez, uh, George Perez. That's his name. George Perez, R.I.P. 1985. I read this back in December, February, I think. But uh, I finished the, the George Perez run. But at the end... They had like a, a little female team up that I didn't get to, that I got to now. And uh, yeah, it's just the female, uh, if you can see, there's a, uh, I don't know all their names, but you can pick them out. Just all the female uh, sidekicks and s superheroes. And they're teaming up to help Wonder Woman save the president. It's just a, a quick, like, five-page thing where, and they're all amazed by, oh, yeah, the icon, Wonder Woman, because uh, this book came out for, uh, well, the books originally came out for the 50th, 50th anniversary of Wonder Woman. But in order to complete the whole thing, I had to, you know, go through these. But there's also a graphic novel back here, too, written by, and it's about the Civil War. Look at this artwork. It's about the Civil War in the... In Wonder Woman, I never knew this until I read it. There's a separate Amazon tribe that they're they're kind of they're Muslims, they're Middle Eastern, and in the '80s comic, they're really you know very racially not very well depic depicted, you know, beheading people and shit. And um, in this version, there I guess they're. They're leaning more towards the per 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 Persian side, you know, uh, which is uh, that's what I kind of want them to do. And maybe I'm seeing it in there, but they're not making it so Middle Eastern. But then it also made me think because, uh, you know, I'm not I, I can't remember what year it was that this came out. But it also just made me think that, like, I was thinking of uh, Middle Easterns as Persians. But I, I was also thinking of the Greeks as white. And no, no, the Greeks aren't fucking white. That's just Hollywood messing with your fucking head again. The Greeks aren't white, you know? And that's just how you think, oh yeah, well, the Greeks must be white. Princess Diana, she represents Greece, and she's white. But no, you know, if... Uh, and then even, you know, uh, not to go too far off, uh, I haven't heard, I haven't even looked for anything Gal Gadot related. So I know everything with her Israeli shit and everything. I don't know. I don't go out looking for that kind of stuff. If, if I see something about it, I, I comment about it. But uh, yeah, Wonder Woman, George Perez, wonderful. Get, get back to it. But it was also uh, talking about the Civil War that uh, the, the Amazons were having with the Benny uh, something. I can't remember. It, I can't remember the tribe's name. But 
they it, it's a 10 year time jump so i didn't feel too bad about not reading it right away and i'm glad i didn't because it had a lot of uh like yeah this is new information 10 years have passed in the comic book world i don't know any of these characters the yeah wonder woman's mom is now wonder woman and uh it's all about they're trying to re they're trying to regroup all on the same island like okay uh we we've been two separate tribes now let's all try to live on the same island but the Amazons do a false flag attack. And I don't think they had the language for that back then. But they do a false flag attack. So uh, the, the, Muslim, <laughs> the Muslims could attack them. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, trippy. Two, early 2000s, uh, post 9-11, you know, Muslims are bad kind of thing. They do better. But all right. And then, uh, you know, another one of my TBRs. Well, no, I saw, I went to another book club. And I, uh, it was a Hunchback of Notre Dame, and I cheated because it's, it, okay, it's a movie book club kind of thing. You know, the, watch the movie, read the book. And I watched uh, the old 1920s version of uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, which was fucking trippy. Just the sp no special effects, you know, well, no, they have camera tricks to make it look like he's hanging from the, the church and everything and he's you know, yeah they made it look really realistic that he's hanging there I hope he wasn't well he probably was hanging there and just the stunt devils and the the live crowds and yeah uh, more it was a silent film so I uh and then well I, I went over there to the book club and they told me the real story and you know they don't mind if, if you're ever worried about going to a book club everybody goes over there all nervous afraid to sound stupid I go, I go over there and sound stupid everybody's trying to you know Everyone's just trying to read a book and try not to, you know, even doing this, even doing this, uh, YouTube. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to make you understand. Yeah. I, I get all of it, most of it, but yeah, some things go over my head too. Like, Oh, okay. I, I didn't see it from that point. Or I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get that connection. Okay. You know, as much of a detail reader as I like to brag that I'm about, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of things go over my head. Look up people, look up reviews, find out. Yeah. Just expand. People love talking about their books. But anyways, uh, the, their, their whole thing is that they read classic books and I want to read more classic books. And I got uh, Crime and Punishment by Fordo Dorchevsky, Russian guy. But I already know uh, the gist of this story. But of course, I, uh, I thought I knew the story of the Hunchback of Notre Dame too. But no, I had the PG, even the 1920s version, the old Silas. I thought it was going to be, okay, more true. And it was. But it was the ending was totally uh, different from the film to the movie, and uh, I ordered, and uh, you know you can order books on eBay for like three bucks, people. There's no reason why you can't. I don't mind giving you an old books a home. Oh, hey, okay, but yeah, the Hunchback of Notre Dame that was very good. My movie experience. Uh, I also started the complete story of J.D. Ballard. If you remember, if you're still here, 23 minutes in. I talked about uh, buying books off of uh, charities online. And this made it all worth it because they sent a little thank you note. Not a, even a little thank you note. All they did was uh, say, thank you. I won't show you because they wrote my name. I won't show you, but uh, and it has all my personal information. But they just like, hey, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you for sh helping the library. Help the Oakland Library. Support the Oakland Library. Yeah. The Friends of the Oakland Library on eBay. And yeah, so, but uh, J.D. Ballard, holy shit, I went through uh, uh, a rabbit hole with this guy. I, I, I heard about him, but I didn't know there was a whole subgenre just called Ballardism. Ballardism. I mean, this is uh, his, all his short stories. And I've heard about him, of course, being, you know, sci-fi, but I didn't know his lore or his, uh, the th I saw some uh, sci-fi with Damon Walters, he's had, he had a good video where he's talking about Ballerism. And, uh, but okay, I listened to, uh, I think it's, uh, Jesus Christ, what podcast is it? It's uh, Thrill, Thrill Billy's Worker Party. And one of the guys, he's on there and he said he just got uh, the short story collection. I'm not sure if it's the same one, but J.D. Ballard. And he talked about a short story that, tri that blew me away and I want to read. I want to find it. I can't remember the name of it. But it's about, it's an alternate universe, alternate history where white people completely wipe out black people. 
but it's uh, they they got enough technology that they can make robots, cyborgs, and they make cyborg butlers to make it, cyborg slaves. To, and they make them look like black people, but they make them look like the racial Django, you know, like uh, blackface with the red, big old red lips and shit. And it's just like, yeah, man, I want like some trippy shit like that. And I know this uh, is somewhere in here. I'm going to find it. But uh, the stories I did go through, um, Prima Belladonna, and that was, it was about a man studying alien plants and... Uh, it's some. It's in some alternate universe, I guess, where everybody knows about this stuff and they're talking about it. And the plants are like making music. But his, a neighbor, an alien neighbor, oh, they're cutting in somewhere. An alien neighbor uh, moves in, and he falls in love with the alien neighbor. But it made me think of a uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne's uh, short story, Dracucci's daughter where it's a mad scientist and somebody's falling in love with him. Well, he's a botanist. It has to do with botanists. And then I read uh, Escapement. This was one was really short. It was about a man who's stuck in a 15-minute time loop. Like, he looks at the clock, he's like, but then he realizes that, oh, wait, it's only a 14-minute time loop. Oh, wait, I only got 13 minutes left. And it's really short and it's very, he's very cool, uh, these short stories. Uh, Concentration City is about I, I i'm not sure is they're in like a mega city and and the uh space is so confined that like real estate yeah you can have this real estate uh 50 cents for a foot you know that's how you know that, and there's no room to fly because this uh, student is thinking like hey yeah wouldn't it would be cool if we could fly but there's no room in this giant city to fly and it's uh after watching the the Ballardism video on YouTube and how he tries to use uh, artwork and architecture in his in his books, it's tripping me out. Tripping, tripping me out. And what else did I want to say? The the buzz saw interrupted me. They're going to be doing that. They're still doing work on my neighbor's apartment. I got so incredibly lucky that they don't ha that they didn't have to do so much work in my room. They're doing all the work around my room, like. The floor below me is getting all ripped up. So technically my floor is only half a floor, but I got the, the half that's good, if you know what I mean, if you get that. But Ballardism. Uh, and then uh, what I'm gonna read, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I was reading The Flash, but I saw this and I had to get it. It looks so cool. If you know, uh, well, the question I'm in this, and if you've ever seen Watchmen, Rorschach is based off of the question. And I've seen the question on, on uh, he's like a detective, but he's all about conspiracy theories. At least the Justice League episode I saw, he was like uh, conspiracies and like, uh, this is an old eighties one. So it looks all violent too, or you're gangsters. I don't think he has uh, superpowers. I don't really know anything about him. And that's what I like. And uh, they just come, came out with part two. So part one was super cheap. Right now, if you don't know, the comic books, since all the comic book movies are bombing, all the comic books are going super cheap. If you ever want to get into comic books, now is probably the time to buy some really cheap used comics. Support your, uh, yeah, yeah, you can find something. But yeah, comic books, they're selling for really cheap for the time. I know they're expensive, but they're also an investment, somebody told me. That uh, if worse comes to worse, I never, I never even think about selling my books. So, but yeah, okay. Where's my news? Okay, going back. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you for sticking along. Twenty-eight minutes. I'll try to shit. Not even know enough, enough time. I talked about the dude burning himself. Uh, Muslims in a. Uh, uh, the Muslim community in Michigan, they're doing the big old thing right now that they don't want Donald Trump, they don't want Biden. It's just like, oh, I don't know, that's the big news right now. Even that he called for a peace on Monday. On Monday, he called for, uh, right now, he said, uh, he was fucking eating ice cream with Seth Meyers. He's looking like a fucking old man eating ice cream. Fucking disgusting, he looked like. And he's talking, oh yeah, uh, peace by uh, Monday. And then you talk to the, they say, okay, hey, Israel, hey, Palestine, what do you guys think? Yeah, that's not happening. You know, they, they're, they're nice about it. We're hopeful. Yeah. 
Just what a fucking idiot. Um, and then Trump and Biden are both going to the border. Let's see who could treat the Mexicans the worst. All right. Going back, I don't want to bring up my race and everything to it, but you got to see how, like, I don't know, and, and I'm paranoid, and I don't like to talk like this, but, like, half the country wouldn't mind if I got deported. 25, the other 25% uh, would just do it to go along with them, and the other 25% just doesn't give a shit. Just like the guy who burned himself. And then people... Uh, People don't know this. Yeah, uh, Mexican Americans, uh, people who are American citizens get deported all the fucking time. They don't give a shit. And you think, oh yeah, you just walk around with your green card and shit. Not all the fucking time, but it happens enough times where, hey, do you feel safe? At least me. And then even these racists, you know, I go out on my walks. They don't know what race I am. Who, who gives a shit? You know, they're racist as fuck. They'll throw a beer can at me and, you know, go drive on. You don't think it happens, it happens. And all that shit that doesn't get reported. You know, just, I, and I'm not the only one. You just don't feel safe in America anymore. And I know they always say, oh, yeah, the crime rates are low. It's, I don't know. From what I hear from my neighbors uh, and the bookstore, well, it's all anecdotal. I understand that, too. But it doesn't look good. <laughs> yeah, ceasefire, the guy who shot him. Oh, uh, when Joe Biden did his little TV stunt. 50 protesters, they found out that, oh yeah, he's going to be at Seth Meyers. He, they went and protested him and 50 of them got arrested. And it just made me think back of when Trump had his protesters arrested. So he could have his little camera stand in front of the camera, in front of the church, and hold his, his Bible upside down. It's just, and, uh, talking about... Uh, I can't tell the difference between authors. Can you really tell the difference between... Joe Biden and Donald Trump, if, if, uh, you, if, 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 if you just read the words, could you really tell the difference? I don't think you could. They're both fucking out of their mind. What else did I, uh, Bikini Fossil, there was some churches attacked in Bikini Fossils, big, a lot of people died, churches attacked. They, uh, last time I saw, this was yesterday, last time I saw it, when they were talking about it. Even on the world news, there's so much stuff happening, they just go by it, uh, Self-immolation. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, and then, okay, I don't think this gets enough uh, talk in the news since we're talking about Palestine and everything, uh, world news, that people don't understand that, like, why are all these people who hate Jews supporting Israel for Palestine? And it goes back to this crazy prophecy that the Christians have that the Jewish people will take over all their land and then Christ will come back and then take all over that land and then the Christians will come back. If like that's like a bare bones of it if if I'm getting your and that has to do with like the the revelations and everything. And that goes back to Joe uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. They're both Christians or you know, Catholics whatever. The same fucking difference. They go to the same church probably. Well, they've been to the same church. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a church right in front of the 